Hello and welcome to La Liga Insiders. We're going to dive right into our menu for today. We have a new outright leader after match day 13. Rayo Vallecano has proved that Real Madrid, they are not invincible. And Barca is the new leader in La Liga after 13 rounds. And then what's new with our insiders? Oh, talk about a TIFO today and extra time with Tony Cross kind of tells you what he thinks about the Champions League rival for Real Madrid, an old foe. Gemma Soler, how are you? All good in La Liga? New leader after, well, Vallecas proved to be a uh, ground too strong for Real Madrid to come out with the win. 3-2 win by Rayo Vallecano, which pushes and Andoni Iraola's side only two points away from European spots and two points is what separates Real Madrid from Barcelona. 3-2, and a very well-deserved win for Rayo. It's hmm. not a surprise if you watch the game. That's exactly what happened. Rayo did everything to win it. Hola, hola, Fer. Uh, yes, it was such a, an emotional match day uh, here in, in Spain, and with uh, that thriller ending in Vallecas. Uh, Rayo Vallecano proved to be a really tough, team to, to beat uh, their home, especially in, in the first half of the season. Something similar happened uh, last season. Then it's a team with not so much budget to maybe refresh the, the locker room and, and physically they can struggle. But in, in the beginning of the season, they are always really tough, especially when in Vallecas they prove to be Vallecas because the atmosphere earlier today, it was uh, really exciting. And um, I think for Real Madrid, they, they didn't have, they didn't put that much energy there. I don't want to say they are thinking on the World Cup. It's what everyone keep asking Ancelotti after that game. Uh, maybe they do think before the game, but when they are professionals and I couldn't see this kind of attitude. Yes, I could see that uh, they were not physical enough. There was a lack of physicality in, in that game for Real Madrid. And one other thing, no Benzema, no party. We need that the only uh, position in the field that didn't have a, a natural uh, second player, it was the number nine. They don't have that and uh, Benzema is uh, struggling with injuries and uh, Rodrigo is doing it really well, but he's not a natural there and, and I think they paid today uh, with Rayo Vallecano that uh, they are uh, enjoying a very convincing beginning of the season with uh, such an amazing a coach like uh, Andoni Raola and uh, yeah they struggled last season they they couldn't uh, make no point against Real Madrid and they could do it eventually uh, earlier today it was Rayo that that started things off taking the lead and then two goals one on a penalty from Luka Modric and another one a brilliant header by by Eder Militao that put Real Madrid up front then Rayo tied it up another penalty by Oscar Trejo and a brilliant goal by uh, Alvaro Garcia to finish it off 3-2 and they could have actually extended the lead on a Florian Lejeune free kick in the 99th minute of play it, that, that Thibaut Courtois sent out into a corner kick. Rayo dominated everything and, and the fact that they, Real Madrid led possession, it's only because of the, the amount of, of, uh, of, of yeah, playing time they had or possession that time that they had towards the end of each half, which is when they looked the best. It's like as if Real Madrid acted better if they're against the corner they did not dominate you know a, a chunk of the match it was okay we are pressure we're about to lose this let's let's pull another gear and it's it wasn't enough at Vallecas Yes, um, yeah, Real Madrid is a, such a competitive team and they work really well they, when they are under stress. That's why sometimes uh, they might not be playing at uh, their best, they might be missing uh, a year, but uh, when they are against the clock or uh, against uh, really few minutes uh, and they need, they, they have to do it, they have to prove it, they o almost always do. Well, they are missing that this in the last few games. Uh, and they miss that today. Usually Real Madrid will sort it out, these kind of games. Uh, yeah. They have so many resources, but 
uh, they are missing that resources right now with the absence, as we were mentioning, of Karim Benzema, with Thibaut Courtois, that he's proving to be a human, it's, he is, and with a midfield that without Toni Kroos and maybe with a, 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 a Luka Modric, a little bit more tired, they, they can miss that uh, resources that help them uh, take these points in these stressful situations. Uh, I think we all know that this kind of um, bad period will happen to Real Madrid. Ancelotti was telling this in the press conferences uh, when everything was going so well and they were uh, enjoying uh, really good games or good, at least good results. Ancelotti was complaining we are not being well and, and he hasn't been saying that. Uh, I remember the, the day they were defeated against Leipzig even though everything was on, on the Champions League. They, and they are in this bad period. I think they are lucky that the, the World Cup is coming and they have some time to think. And, and yeah, they are not leaders anymore. But if you think on the last match day of La Liga before this stop for the World Cup, they have, uh, in at least in paper, a, a easier an easier game uh, compared to, to Barcelona. At home, they don't have to travel. Uh, they haven't been uh, able, they didn't have the need to travel in the last five match days because all of them were at home or in, in Vallecas, uh, they, they didn't have to, to do that. So I, I think they are in a bad period and the best news for Ancelotti and his squad is that the World Cup is just there. And at the end, I think it's gonna be a really tight La Liga. It's difficult to predict because we never experienced a season with this World Cup in the middle, but it's gonna be tight and, and details will uh, define. And, and it's true that this kind of game, so the one against Girona, Real Madrid used to take that point and they are not being able to do that. And I can feel some nerves because just before this match day, uh, there was quite a, quite a big controversy here in Spain, Fernando, because uh, Real Madrid TV, the, the official TV, but usually they, they, they tend to be serious, they did a, a piece uh, talking about how many points did the referee, today's referee, took them away and pointing that day is like, in, because they were so upset as well with uh, with the pen, that penalty uh, against uh, Girona. So they, I think they're kind of nerves in Real Madrid and they, they are trying not to lose this kind of points because they know at the end of the season, this can be what tells who is the champion at the end. If there's two strongholds in Real Madrid and if you can point, pinpoint two, pillars to last year's season uh, or to last uh, season's uh, conquers. You can point in two directions, Thibaut Courtois and Karim Benzema. One of them was missing today and the other one was not at his best, allowing three goals. This is the ninth straight game that Thibaut Courtois has allowed a goal in in, in La Liga. Tony Cross will be back against Cadiz. Uh, you kind of shortly mentioned something about Cadiz. What can you say about the rivals for Madrid in Thursday's game? Well, uh, it's a, a, a team that uh, under Sergio González, for sure, they have improved. And it's that kind of team that they they, they put uh, another year plus uh, when they go to this uh, kind of stadiums. We have seen them uh, taking points in, in Santiago Bernabéu or in the No Camp uh, last season. But uh, it's a big motivation for them and uh, they will try to, to take advantage of this uh, little bit controversy in Real Madrid and this lack of physicality. Um, but of course, playing at home in, in front of a home crowd and, and they ha they, the, the red alarms will be on on Thursday uh, for Real Madrid. It's true that it's the, the team in La Liga who is playing the latest uh, before the, the World Cup and this uh, some kind of, uh, in the in the mind of the players, can be something more tricky, but uh, I think Real Madrid are absolutely favorites in, in this kind of game, even they are in this kind of uh, small crisis. I'm not going to say they are in a crisis. I don't think they are. It's just that they are proving to be humans. And as you were mentioned, in, uh, the, 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 the players, the, the key players of the game changers of last, last season, uh, you said Benzema, so I would like to at their Modric and Cruz, uh, that midfield. They, even these players are not at their best. Uh, I think they have resources enough to, 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 to take the three points and, and to be there in the, in the top of the La Liga. He warned every Madridista. Carlo Ancelotti said bad times will come. Maybe these are the bad times that he was expecting to come. Mm -hmm. And if bad times come, 
there's not a better time for it to happen when there's only one La Liga match to come and then the World Cup break. Um, mm. As far as uh, World Cup break comes, uh, Barcelona have a tough time defending that newly received leadership on, on the table when they travel to, to Osasuna. Uh, Barcelona have uh, certainly all the tools to, to manage it, but Osasuna is not an easy side. No, it's not. It's uh, El Sadar. It's such a difficult uh, stadium, and um, they have less, less players that that will be in, in the World Cup, and this uh, I think gives them uh, more energy or physicality for for this game. They have managed to get three wins in the last four games. Uh, they have a great striker, Timmy Avila, who is in really enjoying a momentum. He scored twice uh, in the last match day against Celta. And uh, they have so much order. They are such a team that uh, they are really good in the pressure and, and in the back. I think it's going to be a really tough game for Barcelona. They have struggled a lot uh, playing against these kind of teams. Uh, we, we have seen it, uh, for example, in the opening day, we were there, uh, Fernando, in the, no, in the Camp Nou against mm -hmm. uh, Rayo Vallecano. Rayo. Uh, they have struggled with this kind of situation, so we will see what, what happens uh, on, on Wednesday. But uh, it, Sorry, on, on Tuesday, but it's, uh, it's a tough game for Xavi's squad. We're going to go right into La Liga's insiders with Gemma Soler's information and then we'll touch on something that Xavi touched upon today in the press conference. Everybody was asking him about the result of the Europa League playoff draw. He wanted mm. to bring attention to Osasuna's game for a reason. It's not an easy match, but everybody mm. wants to know about Manchester United. The concerns are there, even though there's three months separating us from that match. It's the, probably one of the toughest rivals that Barcelona could have had as a result of the draw leading into the playoff round. Yeah, it definitely was the, the, the worst uh, rival that they could uh, face in, in the first uh, knockout stage of the Champions League. And there are concerns. Xavi decided to say it out loud. Um, this uh, has not made very happy some, some, some people there in, in Barcelona because at some, it can be interpreted like a, some uh, point of um, weakness, uh, saying it out loud and complaining it. They, they already complained to have suffered the worst uh, uh, group in the Champions League. It's true, but they complain it so much that saying like an excuse, that's why we are not there. And, and they decided to, to say it again. The truth is that in the locker room, they, they are concerned about this uh, game because it's a team that it's still growing, unmaturing some the points, and they will have to decide that uh, tie away from home in a, such a difficult stadium you know, as Old Trafford. And uh, there is some kind of trauma in Europe, in Barcelona, we have seen it in the last uh, four seasons. And uh, so they are concerned. Sometimes they decided to keep it in, in the locker room. They, they decided to say it in the, in the press conference today with, uh, with Xavi uh, saying it uh, there. It's the worst that we could be facing it. And uh, that, that's a true that uh, you, you cannot tell how will Man United, yeah, they are in a crisis right now. We don't know what will be happening in February and we don't know what will be happening with uh, Barcelona. But uh, they, are, they are concerned because it would be a huge setback if after the disappointment in, in the Champions League, they they are out of the Europa League in this first knockout stage. It'd be a sentimental match tomorrow at El, at El Sadaro this Tuesday as Gerard Piqué is actually mm. on the squad list. And, and our colleagues asked him, as Xavi today, if, if he was considering starting him or playing him. And, and Xavi just answered us the other, as the other day. He did, if he's on the squad list, he's got a chance. It's going to be Piquet's last dance, is it? It's going to be his last dance. We cannot tell if he will be playing or not. We, we don't know. The truth is that we have seen how he was struggling in some games and maybe thinking about him playing two games in a row with all the emotions that it was the, the, the other game against, the last game against Armeria. Uh, we will see. He might be at some point uh, someone important in that game, but I think it depends on the uh, on the result. Um, I want to talk uh, as well on the um, on his last dance. 
uh, there was uh, the club Barcelona, they were trying to do a, an official uh, ceremony to, to say goodbye to Gerard Piqué, apart from the game, that, that, that the similar to the ones we have seen with Iniesta or uh, Xavi in the recent years, but there is no agreement, so this will not be happening. So what we saw against Almeria will be the last dance in the no camp for uh, Xavi. And uh, I want to talk about uh, what will be happening with his position in the field. Uh, Barcelona, they have a verbal agreement with uh, Inigo Martinez, they will, he's not uh, running, uh, run, he hasn't uh, renewed his uh, deal with a Leti club, but uh, the Lions uh, won't make it easy for Barcelona to take him in winter market. That's what Barca would like to do, but it's, it's going to be complicated. And Barcelona, it depends on the money. They w won't take that uh, operation. They will ask Xavi to stay uh, with other options, cheaper options, or with uh, Xavi Riyad, the player from the B team. And the other substitution, the other, uh, we can say, uh, um, place where Piqué will be missed is in the captaincy. And who is in the better position? This won't be decided until after the World Cup, but who is in there in the rankings is Mark Ander Ter Stegen for the years he's been in the club and the leadership he brings to the team. We're going to switch gears now. It was an, a, an eventful uh, Sevilla derby. El Gran derby proved to be as exciting as, as the build-up was. Four red cards shown, a huge tifo mm -hmm. that is uh, it's still in the news in, in Sevilla because that tifo, it took some time to decipher. Um, it had a lot of personalities involved and some uh, drawings or characters that it might, might have depicted or had a little uh, message in, involved in there. What is still going on and what's the talk around the, the, the Sevilla there we still? Well, there is a huge hangover in Sevilla after that um, derby that had absolutely everything. Um, so there are a lot of mutual threats for what happened. For Betis, uh, they, they, are, they seek to ban Monchi, the sport director of Sevilla, uh, from the stadium. They, they say they don't want to have him invited anymore uh, because uh, they think he provoked the, the, the fans in uh, Benito Villamarín. And as for Sevilla, they, they did a, a press release earlier uh, on Monday and, and they said that it was unacceptable, that huge banner that you were mentioning and the same, uh, Monchi was there, this, uh, this banner, uh, they were remembering what happened with that stick in the last derby in the Copa del Rey, they, dis they say this is unacceptable, it, it promotes violence and uh, Sevilla, uh, they will report it, so it's still really hot in, in there and i'm sorry it's not here rodri because he has experienced some technical issues uh, today but uh, we were there in the flash interview area and what we saw in in the the place where both uh, locker rooms are it was an, yet another battle um this is in the martinez munuera act uh, after after the game it won't be having consequences because he couldn't identify uh, who were there fighting uh, oh. but we can say it was a, a, a big controversy there and not with the players but with the staff of, of both teams and uh, at some point martinez munuera decided to to ask the for Sanchez Jesus martinez, Navas. The referee. Sanchez, yes, sorry, uh, Sanchez Martinez. Uh, uh, I was confusing on, on today's. And um, uh, he, he has for both captains, uh, Betis and, uh, and Sevilla. Jesus Navas has to uh, go from the visit and uh, the, the visitors uh, to, to the other locker room to ask for everyone to be a uh, countdown. So it was a derby. It was uh, on fire from the very first minute from when the bus has arrived to the Benito Valle Marin and until the, the Sevilla bus left the stadium. It was uh, really violent, really with a lot of controversy and we will be talking about these possible consequences in, in the next days for sure. Yeah, fighting is not something you want to talk about when, you, when it comes to a football match, but when it comes to a derby and especially this derby, there is some sort of ingredient that accompanies uh, a football in battle that should only remain on the field but but hmm. sadly it hasn't lately it is it it has been a great match uh, nonetheless a 1-1 one, one 
draw with a, with a great goal towards the end by the Mania Kudel. Uh, let's go now to our extra time of the day and a character with an old coat to meet in the Champions League uh, round of 16. Tony Cruz he already knows what they're going to face. They know what to expect. And even though there's only, there's only, well, there's three months left before that match happens. Here's what Tony Cruz has to say about their upcoming Champions League rival. Ja, es war wieder mal soweit heute, Champions League Auslosung und es ist mal wieder schwer geworden. Liverpool ist es geworden für uns, ich glaube neben Paris, das kann man so sagen, der schwerstmögliche Gegner, der uns hätte treffen können. Sagt, ja, Liverpool ist nicht ganz so gut drauf dieses Jahr. Das erste Spiel ist in, glaube ich, drei Monaten, da kann das schon alles schon wieder ganz anders aussehen. Und diese Mannschaft war vor fünf Monaten Champions League Finale, also... Mal wieder ein sehr, sehr schweres Los für uns. Wir kennen das aus der letzten Saison. Wir wollen natürlich auch äh, diese Runde überstehen, aber einfach wird es nicht. Gemma, if that game were to be played today, we know who the clear favorite would be. Because this is not the best Liverpool side we've seen under Jurgen Klopp, but it's three months away. Yes, uh, I think it's uh, always unpredictable when this uh, first uh, Champions League draw, because usually it's like month and a half, two months. But this year, this season, with this crazy season, exceptional with the World Cup in the middle, I think it's absolutely impossible to, to predict. But saying that, I think Liverpool has some kind of trauma with Real Madrid, having lost uh, the last uh, the two, two finals in the recent years and also uh, a Champions League tie. And um, it's a less real, reliable team. And even though it's difficult to say that about Real Madrid, who has just uh, lost against Rayo, it's their first defeat of the season in La Liga and I think they are a, a better team, uh, at least um, with more experience altogether. Yes, we are talking about a different uh, Liverpool, uh, but uh, anything can happen because uh, there are some new pieces there that they still have to, to melt together in, in, the, in the red and of course they will be looking for the revenge. So I think it's doing it uh, well, Tony Cruz, uh, showing respect and Uh, everything to, to this uh, one of the hardest opponent they could ever face. Probably the, the, the toughest they could uh, uh, be facing today in, in the draw uh, with PSG, but probably Liverpool in three um, months, it can be difficult. But there is another factor, Fair, and is the Santiago Bernabeu effect. We saw last season what they oh, could yes. do with the, the, the final game there. I think Real Madrid are a little bit favorites today in three months, we will see. It does play a part. And uh, we have to remember Real Madrid are the only Spanish team left in Champions League play. And we also have to remember that there's only one Gemma Soler. Gemma, oh, thank you so thank much. <laughs> Adios amigos, ciao. <laughs> thank you guys. And uh, you have been filled up with all the information you need to know here on La Liga Insiders. Till next time.